good morning. I'm Dr. Ifedayo Hill to Hill. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm at Family Health University College, located opposite Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center of the Tig Beach Road. It's about 25 minutes drive from Kolebo. The president of this great institution is Prof. Yona Miao Kwakume. He's a fellow of the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. He has co-authored two foundational textbooks, The Comprehensive Obstetrics in, in the Tropics and Comprehensive Gynecology in the Tropics. He is, in fact, the first occupant of the KK Bensil and Enchil Chair at the University of Ghana Medical School. He's also the past chairman of the Obstetrics and Gynecology Faculty at the West African College of Physicians and Surgeons and a former director of the International Family Planning Fellowship Program in Ghana. Is the president of the Society of Obstetrics and Gynecologists of Ghana, representing Ghana on the executive board of the International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics. Wow, imagine being in a school with a president with that kind of profile. So today I'll be bringing you um, the much awaited video where I'll be interviewing Dr. Emmanuel Kingsley Labram, who is the director of student and academic affairs here at the Family Health University College. Is going to be answering all your long awaited questions and giving insights on how to get into this great, great institution. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's how are you this morning? Very well, thank you. I mean, I'm really honored to be here, and I'm sure they all want to hear all the amazing information you have for them about getting into this great institution. Yes, I'll be, I'll be very happy to answer all their questions and uh, any doubts they have about our institution will be all wiped out. Thank you. So we're going to first start with a little icebreaker and we're going to know what does Family Health University College offer? Um, it offers programs in medicine and nursing and uh, there are plans to expand these uh, in, at some point later years. Uh, that will include laboratory services, uh, pharmacy services, physiotherapy, and so on. But at currently, it's mainly medicine and nursing, nursing and midwifery. Oh, that's amazing. So all of you having the eyes on other parts of the um, health profession, you, you know where to look. So now let's zoom in on the medical program. What's it about? Um, we have two currently two main programs. There is the undergraduate program, yeah and then there is the graduate medical program. The um, undergraduate program is a six-year program. The first three years, basic sciences and paramedical sciences, and you obtain a Bachelor of Science degree in medical sciences, and then in a three-year clinical program, which will end up with an MBCHB degree. And then with the graduate program, it's a four, four and a half year program. You come in having done a first degree in uh, science related subjects. Uh, <clears throat> you do one and a half years in basic sciences in a three year clinical program. Thank you very much. I hope that has led all your doubts about the duration of the course. Now, the one question I keep getting a lot is my undergrad was in say biological sciences or botany or zoology will i be allowed to apply for the graduate entry medical program um, yes the uh, graduate medical um, entry medical uh, program you need a first degree in uh, the science related subject and it has to be second class or upper you you could take biological sciences biochemistry chemistry, physician assistant, pharmacy, nursing, nutrition, dietetics, food sciences, biomedical engineering, laboratory sciences, physiotherapy, or radiography. Awesome. So I hope we've all taken note of all of that. And um, if you do have more questions, you can also go on their website for clarification. Yes, in addition to that, uh, you should have obtained a good you know, WASEC or SSE grade in three core and three elective uh, science subjects, of which chemistry <clears throat> must be one of them in the elective uh, program. And you should also have completed, you know, a national service that is, if that is required, 
and you will be then admitted to level 300. Awesome. Thanks for the clarification, sir. Yeah. The old, I also get questions from the foreign trained medical graduates, noticing that um, there's a top-up program for the foreign trained that are about to take the MDC accreditation exam, the MDC being the Medical and Dental Council of Ghana. So what information can we get on that? Yes, uh, we've been running this program since uh, 2015. And uh, we had to suspend it because of the uh, COVID. Right. So foreign medical graduates um, who need to top up and have examination to be registered with the uh, <coughs> Medical and Dental Council, you know, come to us. And it's a form of lectures, tutorials, you know, medical uh, rounds, clinical skills, and uh, get them prepared for the exam. Okay, so I hope that clears the doubt on how to, you know, get yourself ready for the MDC exam. You can always, you know, reach out to the school and get clarification if the program has started or not. Um, I think we've pretty much covered the admission requirement, but is there any um, other admission requirement we'd want to know, especially about the undergraduate pathway? Yes, the, with, the under, with the undergrads, you have to have a, a credit pass, a grade of uh, C6 or its equivalent in the core subjects of mathematics, English, integrated science, or social studies, and then electives with a credit pass in chemistry, and then two from physics, biology, or elective maths. And of course, uh, some of the students wouldn't have done the WASI exam. If you have GCSE or GCE Cambridge, O or A levels, uh, and uh, you meet the requirement, you'll be, um, <clears throat> you'll be given the chance to, uh, to apply. Or if you have the International Baccalaureate or American High School grade uh, 12 and 13 exams, or any equivalent of the WASI or the GC, GCE A levels, then you, uh, uh, you can apply for the undergraduate uh, studies. Thank you very much, sir. So this is a very detailed, very detailed list of um, the admission requirements. And from what I hear, it's not that difficult to get into medical school, contrary to what you be, what, what is put out there. It's, um, it, it's really easy, so just meet up the requirements. Now, um, how many um, um, products do we have from both programs from the undergrad and the yes our, our first our first batch uh, graduated in 2020 and there were 30 students uh, the second batch graduated 2021 and there were 54 students wow wow yes that is so, a lot. yes that's uh, increasing as you can see in fact we have a ceiling given to us by the medical and dental council of 60 students Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, you might want to come and join this because that is a lot. Wow, that is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. So, um, we, there's a weird feeling that medical school is difficult. I've been through the process and I would say it's not difficult. It's just instilled discipline and character development. But someone would say it's because you're a doctor. That's why you're saying that. So, from the academic point of view, what is the success rate of students in the school? Uh, uh, currently, I mean, uh, the first batch, it was 100% success rate. Yes, and then the second batch, uh, 90%. That's great. Yes. So, I hope this questions the, the, the weird notion that the medical school is out to get you. No, no one is out to get you. So, um, you mentioned you produced the first set of inductees in 2020, 2020 correct? Yes. How does that feel? Oh, it was great. It was quite a, 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 I mean, a very emotional period in the sense that um, having to go through the various hoops as a private institution to yeah. try and get this started and also uh, to be able to eventually, you know, manage to get uh, all the various uh, boxes ticked and get your students, you know, graduating. It was quite one of the overwhelming feelings you would ever have. I made me to say congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to everyone here. You've done amazing. Um, a quick question is, uh, what's the student to lecturer ratio? Uh, I mean, currently we have uh, in place about 184 
uh, in the faculty, both part-time and uh, full-time. Okay. And uh, if you look at our student um, lecture ratio, uh, it's approximately one, uh, 1. 1.5 to 2.5. Students. So that is yes. really good. Yes. So that means contact with your school lecturers will be good, and then yes. they'll have easy um, um it's easy actually to ask yes. questions and get clarification. That's one thing you definitely need in medical school. I also see in the grounds that there's actually a medical practice set up and running here. Yes, we do have. That is one of the advantages. We do have a hospital, uh, which means that right from year one, you are exposed to you know, the clinical setup. Amazing. Um, <clears throat> and um, we have, you know, quite a number of specialties and we are expanding in fact. Uh, most of it is OMG, uh, obstetrics and gynecology, okay. general medicine, okay. uh, general surgery, um, there's ophthalmology, there's okay. ENT, okay. Uh, and there are <clears throat> an internal medicine, and there are plans to try and uh, expand. Yes, this is basically basically a whole hot, like every like literally almost every sub department is represented here ably. So how are the clinicals done? Uh, clinicals. Um, what we do is that we divide the students into various groups. Okay. And um, as you know, we have a hospital here, so we form part of the clinical rotation. But we have thirty-seven uh, Greater Accra Regional Hospital. All right. Uh, we have Tema Hospital. Okay. Uh, Lekman. All right. Uh, the hospital is no longer there, so we, uh, we don't send students there anymore. And uh, if there are some of the subspecialties in quality that we send our students to uh, participate in. So basically, you're exposing them to whatever facility or yeah that they could possibly be challenged with when they leave the school, which is amazing. Um, now let's talk about what's important money so what are the fees like <laughs> right the uh, fees currently stand at uh, uh, 10,500 for non ghanians that's in dollars uh, in dollars okay yes. and then uh, 9,500 dollars for ghanians it's amazing yeah um uh, i'm sure um there will be questions about uh, about scholarships and so on. Yes, that's my next question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there, there are um, there there are uh, some scholarships uh, mainly from the get fund, mainly um, from the alma mater of our president, that is uh, Michigan University. Wow, uh, which uh, some benefactors have offered to. Uh, sponsor some of our students, and also we now we've now set up the endowment fund for you know, uh, needy and very brilliant students. That's amazing. Uh, that will be offered um, financial benefit. I, I am wild. I'm I'm sure you can see. Like I I the fees actually are very competitive. If you've gone around to shop around for medical schools in Ghana you would know the fees are competitive. And I've had the opportunity to work with some of the um, products from this school because I'm class of 2020 myself from University of Ghana. I, I can attest to the fact that the school is producing very good, amazing quality um, doctors. So if, I mean, the, the, the fees are competitive. So this is, this is my own, you know, thumbs up for anyone looking for it. Um, what is the housing situation like, especially for internationals who don't have family members here? Yes, we, we do have um, uh, residences for international students okay. and also for all our undergraduate students so okay. they are young and, and come from various parts of the country. country. So we do have um, uh, residences for them, currently standing about 241 um, students in oh. residence. Wow. That's, that's actually good. So for all of you having the fears of where am I going to live, is it non-residential, the school has actually thought about that and um, got to give them props for that because that was one of the challenges personally I faced when I moved to Ghana first. But um, is there any plan for um, accrediting your medical fa facility for clinical training, like residency, postgraduate training? 
Uh, yes, uh, in the long term, that is uh, what the plan is. Um, in fact, uh, we, we just uh, been accredited to pick in house offices, which is the first step. And the second step will be to start training those graduate students. Uh, but that is all in the long term. I feel very honored to be one of the first people to hear this. You are accredited to take house officers. So all of you who have completed your medical program looking for um, options, you know, where to, you know where to choose when the portal opens. That's really great. Um, so I would want to ask a very um, interesting question. Why family health over any other program? Right. Well, as, as you've heard already, you know, one is that we have very small class sizes. Yeah. Uh, which encourages you know, student-centered um, interactions and relationships with the faculty staff. And we also have an excellent mix of uh, talented faculty, both permanent and part-time. And they offer guidance, effective and innovative teaching methods and supervision. Yeah. You know, the learning environment also promotes holistic personal development. Uh, we have a mentoring-based system that encourages learning through knowledge and uh, enhances, you know, skill development and attitude, positive attitude formation. In addition, there's a provision, you know, of uh, quality academic and administrative support services and staff. Uh, which include advisors, teachers, and um, uh, teaching assistants. We have a rich library, uh, that is the Tim Johnson Library, uh, with collaborate, collaboration with uh, the University of Michigan, and that provides you know, hard copies of books, journals, newspapers, and e copies as well, and also provides photocopying, photocopying and uh, printing. We have well-equipped laboratories, computer room with multimedia and internet facilities, clinical skills room, and eight models for basic science courses, especially in anatomy. Uh, and if you look at our safety and security services, we take that as a, uh, a premium to minimize you know, crime and harassment of campus. And you've heard about our well-maintained campus residence for our students. Um, <clears throat> and they enjoy positive residence life, facilities, and uh, programs. Uh, the school provides you know, health and wellness support, counseling services, and gym as well. Oh, I heard the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the gym, and that got me. That is amazing. Uh, in fact, one of the... Uh, if you if you look at um, the, the curriculum provided by different medical schools, you know, um, none of them you know look into ways of communication, particularly with sign language, and we're okay. taking that on board. And right from the year one, we offer that uh, program so that our students will be able to at least get the basics in. Um, able to understand and express themselves in sign language. I think that it's a very important one because whilst in um, I think my final year and we went um, around for community health, we went to the school for the deaf and um, and we realized that one of the roadblocks to um, healthcare for them is because the health personnel with the knowledge about to give the service doesn't understand yes. and the, they also, you know, there's an, there's an impairment so we have to look for maybe a, a nurse who is also sign, who is also taught sign language, and there are not many as well. Mm -hmm. So if the nurse is not around, then yeah, then there's a problem. That, yes. That's a problem. Yes. Yeah. At least if you have the basics, yes. you're able to communicate with them. Yes, I I really think that that is amazing and gives an a very good edge. It's a really good edge. So um. I'm even learning more myself, and I thought I had almost all the answers. That's amazing. So um, my last question here will be, any other thing you'd want us to know about family health? Well, I mean, uh, uh, to summarize is, uh, initially, when you think about the fact that, you know, the 
is a private institution and therefore fee paid. Um, you, if you weigh the positives against the negatives, i.e., what you're going to get, you know, yeah. out of your medical education in particular, yeah. um, uh, then you know the positives or the benefits far outweigh the um, negatives. I, I do agree. I mean, I, I do agree to that. So, um, Dr. Labram, I'm, I'm very honored to, for you to have hosted me and given me very amazing detailed information about this great institution. I hope everyone out there has been able to get one or two things, the question answered. And if you want more information, I'm going to leave the link of the, um, the website of the university in the description box down below. So you forward this to your friends and family who are looking for options of great medical schools. You'd also be surprised that there are people who actually live in the US and UK, Ghanaians, that want to actually have their medical education here. Oh yes, we, we, we've had uh, quite a few from the UK and the US uh, who were in the first and second batches. So uh, yes. Yeah, because that was, that was the case with me. I had done my um, biomedical sciences in England yeah. and I was insistent on, I want to practice medicine in Africa. There's nothing like learning from those who practice here, yeah. Yes. So that was how I came about oh, Ghana and all of that. So I hope this information, you find it really useful. Thanks again for dedicating time for me, Doctor, and thanks again for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.